as you all know, the topic for today's webinar is SAP Ariba and its value proposition, uh, which is also referred as intelligent spend management. Before we start uh, with our webinar, uh, just a uh, little housekeeping from my side. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation or uh, after the presentation, you can uh, type those questions uh, in the Q&A uh, chat box, which you can see in your Zoom panel. We would be taking all the questions at the end of the session. Uh, we would be also running a couple of poll questions in between to make this webinar uh, interactive. Uh, I would like. I would also like to inform that uh, this webinar has been recorded, and uh, we would be sharing the recording with all the attendees uh, after the webinar. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yep. Thank you. Can start recording. Uh, uh, the I meeting is recorded. Yeah. yeah, it is recorded. Okay. Uh, so I'll quickly uh, run you through the agenda for today's webinar. We will start uh, the webinar with the uh, challenge your business leaders are facing in supply chain. Uh, what are the key focus area and how supply chain priorities are getting evolved in current uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, we will then quickly have an introduction to Amden and its services and how Amden is uh, helping the customer with these challenges. Uh, after that, uh, we will cover SAP spend management, uh, uh, how SAP spend management is driving business uh, process to make uh, customer supply chain more resilient in uh, current challenging uh, business environment. Uh, we will close the webinar with customer journey with SAP solution, SAP Ariba solution and uh, what are the value creation opportunity it offers, uh, followed by the Q&A session. Uh, so, uh, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, a quick introduction uh, to the speakers for today's webinar. Uh, we will start with uh, Amit Patil. So, uh, uh, Amit Patil is a solution architect with uh, Amden Consulting with over 18 years of uh, consulting experience across multiple industry. He also uh, leads solution and technology uh, architecture practice in Amden uh, for both uh, UK and India region. Uh, so the uh, second speaker which we have for today uh, is uh, Girish Donge. He is a uh, head of solution consulting uh, for SAP uh, procurement and business network. Uh, he is widely recognized as a, a supply chain thought leader in the market uh, as he uh, aims to infuse procurement and finance thought leadership uh, to the intelligent spend management. Um, a quick introduction about Ashok Bidari, who is our uh, third speaker for this uh, webinar. Uh, he represents SAP India with over 15 years of experience. He helps partners in SAP space to sell and co-sell Ariba. Uh, he has a good technical knowledge uh, when it comes to SAP Ariba downstream application. Uh, so, uh, uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to uh, hand uh, over this uh, uh, remaining presentation to Amit, who will be uh, presenting you and quickly running you through the SAP chain and procurement of key focus areas. Over to you, Amit. Thank you all. Am I audible, Aishwarya? Uh, yes, Amit, you're audible. Thank you, thank you for hanging over. Uh, welcome all. Uh, it's it's a great great pleasure to have you uh, all here, and thanks thanks for taking out time from your busy schedule for joining us today on this webinar. Um, I'll be uh, so as as far as mentioned, I'm uh, my name is Amit Patil. I look after the supply chain and procurement practice, uh, amongst other uh, things that I am responsible for within Amden. Um, and I'll be sort of uh, working with or, or talking with, uh, with, with our SAP panelist uh, Girish and Ashok today uh, to bring uh, the value proposition of uh, SAP uh, spend management and uh, product suite uh, to you. Uh, uh, to begin with, I would like to sort of uh, talk about uh, the current business uh, Atmosphere, uh, we we sort of are still not out of the woods as far as the pandemic is concerned. 
we have certain vaccines which has at the doorsteps uh, and then there is a light at the end of the tunnel but as businesses as individuals we are still uh, facing the huge uh, change and impact of of pandemic um, in our day to day life and business life um specifically speaking about supply chain uh, we we feel that uh, there are there are uh, quite a few factors that are coming uh, in in the arena for supply chain and business leaders uh, we are expected to uh, sort of react to this sudden change in environment uh, business environment because of pandemic lockdown and uh, transportation and and all the impact that it had so this slide essentially is just calling out few of the uh, the focus areas that uh, that we think um, are, are are the priorities for the supply chain and business leaders these days and procurement leaders um, to call a few out of this uh, the risk management uh, of of the supply chain ensuring that our production lines are, are running without disruption um and then talking about uh, uh, looking at the new suppliers renewal of the uh, setting up the contracts with the alternative resources looking at the spend rejigging the the uh, parameters uh, the production lines the production plants and all these uh, various different aspects are are the key focus today and uh, if we uh, sorry um, ashok if you can go to next slide please if we if we speak about the typical organization and the various aspects of organization whether it's a suppliers or the logistics uh, doing the custom clearance on the ports whether it's a procurement or or manufacturing or various different aspects of the businesses we 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 are seeing every single line of business is facing different challenges uh, whether it's suppliers uh, and their commitment to to support uh, the honor their the commitments for running or Uh, production line or um, their their cash flow, uh, which we probably have to jump in as a as a customer to to help them with the cash flows. The the ports and customs are seeing seeing a delays in clearance uh, for for various different reasons. Um, procurement teams are trying to uh, onboard new suppliers, find alternative suppliers. um manufacturing uh, production plants are are really uh, at high, hand to mouth level trying to get uh, where it was earlier uh, planning on a quarterly basis or monthly basis this this time it's it's like a weekly basis ensuring we have enough workforce to to support um, our our each shift etc so the 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 challenges are far too many and um, in in every aspects of 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 the business whether it's a finance uh, whether it's employee safety and uh, and 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 all all the associated aspects so we we are seeing uh, from supply chain perspective uh, we are seeing a huge challenge and and that's where i think we would like to uh, today's session we would like to uh, sort of understand from your end as well uh, to to see what are your key priorities uh, in the current uh, uh, time and uh, how you are sort of uh, uh, you know managing your current priorities so with that uh, ashok if you go to the next slide please yeah uh, we 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 had conducted few surveys um, and what we have found out is uh, various different business leaders supply chain leaders are implementing some short term strategies uh, may be uh, renegotiating terms with the suppliers uh, which which you know uh, difficult times are demanding from us um whether we are uh, you know finding different alternative uh, suppliers or or any other changing the, the production plan for example all all these uh, different short term strategies are in play um and we did some uh, some surveys across uh, certain regions and we found out that the the top uh, as the slides indicates that there are various different re- impacting factors on supply chain but as we are seeing the top 3 uh, in uh, impacting factors here are uh, first and foremost is the logistical uh, movement channel challenges that uh, supply chain leaders are facing um, the other one is uh, the huge drop in consumer demands i mean consumer demands have have completely changed uh, there was a panic at certain point of time where certain consumer categories uh, got uh, picked up and there was a huge spike in demand whereas certain uh, categories have seen a complete drop um, 
and and with that as as a as a business leaders the the, the finance leaders are facing a huge uh, um, uh, challenge in managing the cash flows as well uh, which is one of the key part cash is a king and uh, we, we in this current timelines when our supply chain is uh, being crunched on the and the cash flows we probably have to sometime go out of the way to provide some cash to uh, ensure the liquidity and the supply chain so very different uh, challenges that we are facing uh, so what we would like to do today is to make it a little bit more interactive we would like to run a quick poll um, and uh, and then we will uh, sort of uh, like to understand your uh, uh, your uh, priorities uh, in the current time so uh, we have just pushed out a, a poll. Uh, if you could uh, uh, take a few seconds uh, to to please uh, indicate your priorities, uh, what you think is the your your top priority or priorities in this current time, uh, that would be really useful for us to drive this discussion. I'll, I'll give you a few more. Uh, Seconds. I hope you are able to see my uh, see the poll on your screens. So we are getting few responses. I'll give you a few more seconds. Yeah, we're getting further more responses. Right. Um, maybe I'll give you a few more seconds just for those who are trying to still submit a few responses. Okay, I think we have. We're still getting few, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think we should give more time. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, given that we have a, a huge amount of content to cover, um, I think we we have closed the poll now. Uh, what we see, it's interesting uh, uh, inputs. Uh, we got 60% of you uh, saying streamlining the procure to pay uh, process is, is the, the priority which comes out of on top, uh, followed by uh, strengthening the supply chain collaboration. That's the second most priority. Um, and third is, is the transparency and the compliance. Um, that, that's the order of the priorities from this group. Thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing with that, sharing that those inputs with us. With that, um, uh, we'd like to uh, jump on to the next uh, point. Uh, we'll quickly introduce uh, ourselves as Andan before we uh, jump into the details of um, the, the, the technology and the, the SAP's uh, value proposition in this space and how uh, the technologies would, would help you to, to manage uh, these priorities for you. Um, so uh, about Amdan, we, uh, we started off in 2011 in the UK, uh, our headquarters in the UK, uh, and, and we expanded after that in 2011, after 2011 into, uh, in the Nordic region, in, in Europe mainland, and USA and India. Uh, India, uh, we since 2013 we have expanded uh, exponentially. Uh, our our uh, main office is in Pune in India, and uh, we are serving uh, quite a few customers uh, from from that location within India. Uh, we have a center of excellence uh, which is best in in India as well, which which essentially serves our global uh, customers and also the Indian customers. We. We have almost across the globe, we have more than 15,000 uh, customers, uh, business users, 
who are we supporting in uh, different shape or forms uh, on a daily basis. Um, we, uh, I'll talk about our service offerings, but I think the differentiator that for us is uh, we, we are a technology consulting company with, with the experience, the uh, workforce, which, is a, which comes with the business experience. That's, that's our uh, focus. And um, we are very uh, closely aligned with SAP. Our SAP partnership uh, is at different level in different geographies, um, and we are really proud to be associated with SAP uh, and working really closely to bring a value of SAP products to to uh, yourselves, the customers across the globe and in India as well. Um, we operate in various different uh, industry verticals: uh, automobile manufacturing, utilities, chemicals, FMCGs, to name a few. Are our our uh, niche uh, or core uh, industry verticals. Um, we, uh, with that, I will probably uh, take you to the next uh, slide uh, to talk about a little bit more about our our, our offerings. Um, Ashok, please, if good. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we our our service offerings are split into four pillars, as as you can see here. Uh, the first one is the business applications uh, and application services. Uh, the second one is cloud computing, uh, followed by consulting services and analytics services. So the business um, application services essentially spans uh, to, to uh, SAP and SAP ecosystem applications. Uh, our focus is currently uh, on S4 HANA and, um, and associated uh, uh, Value chains created as so for HANA, for example, um, open text and uh, enterprise content management, which is associated with the uh, with, with for HANA, um, with the invoice management solution WIM, which is supported by open text as well. Uh, we also have a very strong expertise in uh, certain specified areas, specific areas in in uh, in ERP side, uh, maybe warehouse management or BPC. Um, these are our core. Uh, uh, features uh, or, or expertise, I would say. Uh, within S4 HANA, there, there are different line of businesses and uh, we, we really are uh, proud of ourselves in terms of supporting a lot of customers, uh, both in Europe, UK and uh, uh, USA and India, in terms of helping them with streamlining their supply chain, whether it's the production planning, whether it's the procurement solutions, whether it's a, a supply chain collaboration with the suppliers, uh, we have helped a lot of customers in that space. Um, our focus also is on a software as a service products uh, offered by SAP uh, in in the areas of um, uh, Ariba that we are going to talk about today. Uh, then success factor on HR space, uh, concur for travel and expenses, um, and last but not least, the, the field glass for uh, contingent labor management. Um, some of them we will be talking today. Uh, in details later, um, but in, in in addition to that, uh, I think SAP's product suite has has uh, has it transformed over the last few years, and really adding values and uh, essentially all the cloud products are uh, helping customer to essentially uh, um, adopt this uh, as a plug and play uh, kind of uh, uh, framework. Um, all the best practices are packed in this uh, this cloud products uh, industry specific as well, and uh, without much uh, uh, upfront investment, uh, uh, customers are able to adopt uh, with the best in class um, applications. Um, having uh, the cloud applications, as we have understood that cloud applications are best on best in class practices and industry uh, practices, um, there is always a need. Uh, to suit your uh, particular uh, industry or your specific uh, situation as a business, there is always a need to extend uh, this cloud-based products or, for example, ERP products. And uh, for that, uh, we we are aligned with SAP strategy to to make developments uh, using SAP Cloud platform. So our cloud computing services is focused uh, around uh, SAP Cloud platform and various different services the SAP Cloud platform offers, whether it's uh, innovative products. Um, to, to bring in innovation fast at cheaper rate um, is uh, it's using services like uh, RPA or, or, or machine learning or IOTs, uh, big data. Uh, we, we have expertise on that. To share uh, an interesting use case that we just recently delivered for one of our customers is, again, in the 
very much context of the current top today's topic is about uh, supply chain disruption uh, here in the UK. We we developed one uh, application for one of the customers who is using Ariba and and SAP Cloud platform. So we pulled the data from uh, Ariba for the supplier supply details and their, their the regions in they operate within the UK. We pulled the data from uh, the government website uh, from the NHS or COVID uh, COVID cases. And we, using SAP Cloud Platform, we merged that data, essentially extended SAP's uh, data set with, with the public data set and gave uh, the supply chain managers a visibility uh, of which suppliers in which regions are impacted or more likely to go down into the lockdown. And that was done in a matter of days as against weeks uh, using the, the value offered by um, the, the ecosystem that SAP offers, uh, Ariba APIs, for example, or the SAP Cloud platform, uh, you know, services for for uh, connecting to different applications um, using the Java code, uh, open source code to, to build these applications. Uh, it's very interesting area evolving. Uh, if those of you who are interested, we definitely would love to talk and walk you through more, more details. Given the time restrictions, I probably would stick to uh, to the topic today. But yes, we would love to uh, explain this use case in more details or understand your requirements in this space if you have any uh, to, to, uh, to as, as offline activity potentially. Uh, moving on to the next uh, bit, which is our consulting services, which essentially we are helping our customers to um, to, to prepare for uh, that eventual move on to S4 HANA from ERP side, uh, trying to understand how they're uh, one must admit that there is a quite a big change in SAP space with different products coming in. How those products sort of uh, work together and how it will work together in your uh, application landscape and what could be your roadmap to adopting those products, how they can help uh, your certain challenges or use cases. Uh, that's that's consulting work we, we do uh, undertake and we've been helping our customers in there. Whether it comes to infrastructure uh, and, and managing the infrastructure, moving your on-prem infrastructure to cloud or having a, 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 a hybrid landscape. Uh, we, we have the experts in that space who could help you in, in ensuring uh, you've got a roadmap and then once you have a roadmap, we can execute, help you execute that roadmap as well. Um, apart from that, we have uh, bread and butter services like um, rollouts and AMS supports uh, that, that we kind of provide our uh, customers globally. Uh, interestingly, we also are into business process mining uh, with, the, with the platforms like Celonius and uh, Business Optics. Uh, we, we provide these services. And last but not the least, uh, uh, we, we are also into analytics. Um, so analytics, you can see the list of tools that uh, we uh, provide as a service, uh, whether it's SAP or non-SAP products. But it's probably not the tool as such, it's more what we bring to the table in our through our experience, whether it's a, a head of procurement uh, analytics dashboard or whether it's a CI or CPO uh, dash, uh, CFO dashboards, um, it's it's that starting position we bring with our experience the, the the starting point a typical head of procurement dashboard what it should include what it should not include potentially we would bring that not just the tool set but we also brings in that uh, business experience and that's essentially the underlying agenda or an under, underpinning feature of our services, which we we are not just a technology house, but we sort of are, are a business-centric, uh, business experience, uh, people-led technology consulting firm. Uh, but that's essentially quickly about uh, us and our offerings. Uh, without further ado, I would uh, probably go back to our topic uh, about supply chain and disruptions. Um, and then value offering of intelligent spend management. I'll hand over to uh, Ashok uh, who would, uh, from SAP who would be able to uh, walk us through in more detail uh, in that topic for him. Over to you, Ashok. Thank you, Amit. Thank you for that uh, great overview. I believe Amdan is doing a great, uh, has great service offerings for in um, all the areas. And uh, yeah, uh, my, myself, Ashok Bidri, um, I'm part of SAP Ariba. Um, partner services um, based out of Singapore and taking care of uh, partner pre-sales enablement um, for the um, APJ region. Today, um, we'd like to walk you through the SAP Ariba portfolio. Um, uh, what are the solutions that we have? How are they going to cater all the business 
challenges that you're getting, um, things like that. So based on um, what Amit shared some time back about the surveys that they have sent and the short-term strategies that have been um, came up, right? So um, some of the things like vendor surveys, supplier metrics, that I could pick up, right? Cloud-based technologies or digitalization, the visibility, uh, managing the cash flow. These are some of the short-term strategies that I have seen in in that uh, in that slide, right? So these short-term strategies can become a long-term goals. Once we start working on or start um, strategizing on these, they can become a goal, and then they, um, we can sustain. Uh, um, in, in, into this in the into these kind of situations, right? Um, so so Ariba does cater to all these kind of challenges and then we'll see um, how Ariba uh, portfolio is going to help both suppliers and um, buyers in order to meet these challenges, right? Um, so Ariba, as I said, we cater to uh, both buyers and suppliers. Broadly, we are categorizing, uh, categorizing our solution portfolio into four categories, right? Source and contract, plan and forecast, buy and deliver, and invoice and pay. And um, under these uh, categories, we have solutions that cater to, the, in, uh, to these uh, solution categories, right? Like spend analysis, sourcing, and contract management. Spend analysis is basically where we um, uh, where we define and the create um, define and create the category strategies. And uh, sourcing, where we identify and source the materials and services that need to be um, sourced, right? And then contract where we are negotiating and manage the contracts with uh, trading partners, right? Similarly, uh, when we talk about the plan and forecast, there are two solutions that we're talking about. Forecast collaboration and inventory collaboration, basically for um, planning and forecasting the demand for goods or services and resources, right? Um, so um, these these are for more from a direct material perspective where we are catering for our, um, you know, for our direct materials, right? And then we have buy and deliver. Under buy and deliver, we have operational procurement, services procurement, and direct procurement. Um, so these are basically where um, we talk more from um, initiating the request for purchasing the goods or services, and then executing the orders um, for goods and services, and then deliver and receive the um, all these goods and services that you have already created or requested for, right? And then um, under invoice and pay, we have uh, invoicing solution, early payment discounts, and payments on maturity solutions. Basically, um, invoicing solutions is, is basically to create and manage the invoices or the credit memos as well, right? And early payments where we are applying um, early payment options for, for some of the suppliers who are requesting or who need uh, you know, who are need enough uh, who are need of uh, in need of cash. Uh, much earlier than their um, invoice payment date, right? Um, for those kind of suppliers, and then we have payments on much maturity, which is basically um, pay the trading partners for goods that are delivered and um, services that are rendered. So on top of this, we also have um, 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 supplier lifecycle and performance. It's basically, um, we call it as SLP and risk. SLP is basically for um, to vet and manage the trading partnership with your, uh, with your trading partners. And then um, risk where you are um, minimize the risk associated with the trading partners, right? So by um, by using this uh, set of solutions, you are you are um, working with your vendors as well, uh, all the trading partners, um, in order to um, uh, to manage those uh, trading relationship and uh, um, minimize the risk associated with the suppliers. And we also have Ariba network, wherein uh, buyers and suppliers collaborate um, over the over the network um, for their all for their um, collab uh, forecast collaborations or inventory collaboration, even for onboarding your suppliers and things like that. So um, we'll talk in, in detail about Ariba Network, its strengths. Um, I have a video that I would like to play in later um, and we'll talk more in detail about that. So that's from the uh, for the supplier relationship. And we also have um, analytics and intelligence and central procurement functions, right? So analytics is basically um, um, uh, where you can um, utilize the analytics and digital innovations to improve the source to pay process execution. So one of the uh, polling questions that um, that we asked was, um, which got more uh, responses was streamline the uh, procure to pay solutions, right? So by using these um, analytics and digital innovations, we can improve those source to pay uh, processes very well, right? And process 
mining as well. And uh, central procurement uh, solutions wherein you have multiple um, ERP systems and you can leverage the central procurement functions to, um, to integrate and then use as one system, right? So we are providing Arib Cater from end-to-end -end solution perspective, both for buyers and suppliers. Right. We also have a um, platform and technology that we can see here where you can uh, where we can extend our um, solutions to the third party systems or we can integrate our solutions to any of the third party systems like um, SAP S4 HANA or ECC or any other non um, any other ERP instances can be integrated with um, all of our solutions um, that are catered by Ariba. And we also have customer and value services that like um, shared service uh, shared services where we provide services um, when a customer buys any of the product solutions, um, we, we help them to implement, right, as a part of shared service. And we also have um, partners like Amdan who are our implementing uh, implementation partners who helps to um, continue these implementation services and make sure that customers are successful and we also have um, customer support um, services and um, uh, the other sow services which are which are supported by ariba as well um, along with the um, solutions or the um, products that we are providing we also um, render the services so in um, in a nutshell we provide solution from end to end um, source to pay solutions as well as for suppliers or their trading partners um, and a platform for um, collaborating with your suppliers, um, uh, collaborating buyers and suppliers digitally over the network. Okay. So that's the solution portfolio in a nutshell. So with respect to value levers, from the value proposition perspective, um, at each solutions, we have, um, when it comes to SLP and risk, we are seeing that 69 to 83% of reduction in supplier onboarding cycle time. Right. So um, currently with manual um, effort, the, the effort that is taking, um, we are seeing the reduction of 69 to 83 percentage. Similarly, when it comes to risk, 36 to 48 percent of fewer compliance and risk management FTEs that we are seeing. Right. And then similarly, um, when it comes to um, collaboration perspective, 50 to 70 percent faster transaction cycles for buyers and suppliers. Right. That's a huge amount of um, reduction when it comes to cycle time. Right. So both for buyers and suppliers. Now, when it comes to the solutions, um, from a source to contract perspective, um, we are seeing um, four, four to 15% of average unit price reduction. Basically, when you do a sourcing activity, we are seeing that the average unit price reduction is going below from four to 15%. And then um, for every 1 billion that is spent, we are seeing a 20 million um, um, savings with respect to contract solutions, right? So we can save um, by, uh, by utilizing the contracts or making sure that the, all the transactions that are happening are, are uh, contract compliance, right? So in that way, we are saving almost around 20 million um, with the, uh, when we are spending 1 billion, right? Uh, with respect to plan and forecast, um, 4 to 12 percent in lower days in inventory. So um, we talked about inventory collaboration. We talked about the forecast collaboration. So these two collaboration, um, these two solutions with respect to direct materials, we are seeing um, these numbers, right? Four to 12 percent in um, inventory, lower inventory days, and then five to 15 percent inventory write-offs, um, as you see, and 13 to 36 percent um, lower revenue losses due to stockouts, right? So we see um, these kind of issues um, when we are when we are um, in a manual process or when um, the collaboration between buyers and suppliers is not digital, right? It, it's, it's a, if it's a manual, then we are seeing these kind of issues. So um, Ariba solutions are helping with uh, with these kind of uh, issues. And then from the buy and deliver perspective, we are seeing 3% of improvement in project completion um, on the budget. And then um, again, um, when, when your orders are, are in compliance with contract, right? So um, when the orders are getting attached to your contract, which, which gets, uh, which, which will be missed when you are doing a um, manual um, creation of provisions. So there are multiple systems that you are using for your procurement activity. It is, uh, your contracts may not be um, effective when you are buying things. So in that way, um, you are still seeing 20 million contracts uh, leakage per 1 billion of spend is, is being saved, right? Um, with respect to invoice and pay, we are seeing um, 2 to 3 million uh, of savings per 1 billion of target, right? So when, when um, most of the invoices are becoming automated, where um, sub suppliers can directly um, send the invoice to a buyers um, digitally over the network then um, the kind of effort uh, that an accounts team has to do is going to be reduced, right? So the most of the, um, the business um, rules 
principles and things like can be um, applied um, even before the invoice is, is, is reaching to your buyers, right? So um, errors can be corrected over the network and then um, a right kind of invoice can be sent across. And then um, the one to two percent reduction external workforce cost, right? The more the um, amount of FTUs you have for your accounting activities, um, more the cost, right? So we are helping you to reduce that cost as well. And um, so um, with this, we are saying that 42% of, um, 40 to 50% of operating cost reduction due to um, efficiency gains, right? So overall, we are saving almost around 40 to 50%. So these are all benchmark figures based on the, um, based on our customer inputs, based on what we have seen from the industry standards, um, the customers who are using our solutions have given this feedback. And then um, based on that, we have um, coming up with these numbers. And, um, with respect to analytics and um, uh, in, um, uh, intelligence um, solutions, um, so what we are um, what we are having is 20 to 36 percent of lower analysis and reporting costs, right? So um, as we are seeing, the reporting can be generated using the um, SAP Analytics Cloud or um, Ariba uh, reporting solutions. Um, we are getting all the data at one place, whether it's for direct or indirect or services. Um, you are getting the um, all the data at one place, and then so that you can um, generate the kind of reports that you want um, for the visibility. And this will help you to make smart decisions in the in the future, right? For your procurement activities. So we are seeing um, that cost is go also going to reduce when you stop using the other um, systems uh, for just for the reporting purposes, and you get all the reports at one place in um, using the SAP Analytics Cloud and SAP Ariba reporting, and then. Um, with the help of um, uh, central procurement solutions or by um, uh, intelligent um, intelligence um, uh, technologies, we are seeing that 19 to 30 percent of less time spent by IT on design and integrations because we are Ariba SAP Ariba itself provides almost around um, 200 um, 200 plus integration um, options with your SAP ERP or SAP ECC instances, whether for its applications or for our network, um, we provide that um, integration out of the box. So you are going to save that design and then uh, most of um, all the solutions are in the cloud. So you are going to save um, that IT uh, spent by 90 to 30 percent. Right. So in that way, um, these are some of the value propositions that we see um, when, we, when we are using the Ariba solutions. Right. Let's see how, um, what's the power of when we use both SAP S4 HANA and SAP Ariba solutions, right? So um, SAP Ariba solutions mainly complement all the um, SAP solutions or SAP S4 HANA solutions right so we have vendor management operational sourcing operational contract um, operational procurement or supply chain supplier collaboration invoice management these are some of the um, main activities that we see on the sap s4 hana um, solution and we have the um, complementing solutions which are supported by Ariba like um, for uh, vendor management we have SAP Ariba supplier management where we do an onboarding process um, registration pro and registering onboarding qualification and then we can push the same data to um, to your ERP it, so it will be um, so that source of truth can be either your SAP S4 HANA or SAP Ariba where the data is maintain right so and um, we have strategic sourcing solutions right for operational sourcing uh, in s4 hana we have a um, complementary solution from sap ariba which is strategic sourcing where we do an um, electronic uh, bidding um, or as you see here um, uh, mostly on um, sourcing activities right e bidding e auctions we are doing and um, uh, there are it's it's all a template based where you can utilize our sourcing solutions um, more effectively um, by using the uh, using this um, configured templates and uh, can reduce the cycle time things like that and then we have operational contracts in s4 hana which is supported by contract management solutions most of the contract authoring processes digital signature um, document collaboration um, all these things can be um, can um, sap Ariba contract management solutions can help which are not uh, there uh, right now in, in s4 hana operational contract operational contracts right so where you can make more of an outline agreements or contract line item documents can be generated over S4HANA where authoring and 
document collaboration is done in contract management solutions of SAP Ariba. Similarly, when it comes to operational procurement, um, we have uh, most of the, um, the, we have guided buying where the any casual users, end users who don't know much about the procurement can go ahead and buy um, with an user, ease of use uh, solution, which is called as guided buying, right? So it's, a, it's, um, it's more of a consumer graded experience that the user gets. And then um, all the items that they're going to buy are in compliance with uh, company rules and policies, right? And we also has spot by uh, spot by is not applicable in this region but yeah we have a spot by where you can go ahead and buy um, items which you don't find it in um, Ariba right or in your catalogs uh, and then there are there are almost sort of 10 plus 10 million plus item where you can compare and buy then those are in compliance with rules and policies right so we have managed catalogs e-forms and templates um, we have tactical bidding as well right um, Three bidding and source where you can just negotiating based on the price you can use the um, sap work added bank solution as well and then easy workflow where most of the workflows can be configured um, even at the customer end. and our partners like amazon can also help in to um, to, to do this um, configurations at a much ease right and then we have supply chain collaboration as i talked um, is more from the direct material direct materials um, for forecast collaboration or um, as you see um, forecast and commit scheduling agreements um, SMI and consign and subcontracting quality inspections or the quality collaboration supplier enablement activities those these all can be done um, using the supply chain collaboration and then um, here at the SAP side we have uh, more from um, technology perspective right supply portal EDI facts and these are supported Invoice management solutions, SAP Ariba is providing all the electronic invoicing, um, invoice pre-validation rules, which helps to reduce uh, most of the human errors that, that are faced during the invoice creation. And it takes a lot of um, uh, um, time from the accounting team. And then we also have discount management and DPO extensions, which supports all this um, SAP S4 HANA solutions, right? And for all these um, solutions, we have, as I mentioned previously, we have almost around 213 plus standard integration processes to S4 HANA, right? So um, all these solutions can be integrated to S4 HANA with um, with the different documents flows or master data or transaction data, any kind of um, the, um, integration is, is possible. So that's the power of SP, SAP S4 HANA and SAP Ariba when they are implemented together. Right. So I have a small video which will show um, how the suppliers and buyers can collaborate um, over the network and the power of network um, with a small video of two minutes. Please let me know um, you can hear the uh, volume. What is a Ariba network and why should your company be a part of it? Simply put, Ariba network is a dynamic digital marketplace where buyers and suppliers collaborate on procurement and supply chain transactions. And why should your company be a part of it? Because of the network effect principle. The more users and the more connections a network has, the more value it provides. Ariba Network is the world's largest B2B network, connecting millions of companies in 190 countries around the globe. It's constantly growing, adding buyers and suppliers that collectively buy and sell trillions of dollars of goods and services every year. That's millions of dollars in transactions taking place every hour of every day. And all those interactions produce data. Data that Ariba Network enhances with more data, like supplier risk factors, to infuse intelligence into every transaction. Streamlining B2B commerce, making it more informed, more efficient. On Ariba Network, it's easier to quickly exchange knowledge and information with your trading partners while nurturing long-term relationships. With millions of members, it offers more opportunities than any other network, connecting your company with new partners and ideas so you can weather challenging times. Meaningful introductions, inspiration and innovations are happening right now on this trusted, thriving network. This kind of knowledge sharing and collaboration can keep your supply chain intact and your business on track. With the right connections, you can transform everything from product development and manufacturing to global expansion using the network's secure, flexible solution platform and expert partner ecosystem to solve unique business challenges. And nothing beats knowing that your network never stops growing, multiplying your connections with partners that can help you control spending and redefine how work gets done. That's the Ariba network effect. Just imagine the effect it will have on your business. 
Okay, that's about the Ariba network. So we have almost around um, 4.3 million, um, 4.3 million suppliers um, over the network, and uh, almost around two, two trillion. Um, commerce is being transacted through that Ariba network and we see that almost around um, every 5.4 seconds a new supplier logs into the network or um, joins the Ariba network. So um, we cater almost around um, 190 countries with 21 languages and things like that, right? So um, so, um, so this is where uh, most of the collaboration happened between um, buyers and suppliers, whether for its uh, direct materials or indirect or small services or any kind of um, uh, any kind of supply chain collaboration activities as well. So with that, um, I would like to end my presentation. So we have one polling question that would, uh, I should I would be presenting that. Thank you so much. If you have any further questions, please uh, post it on the um, q and I'll be able to answer. And with that, I'll be handing over it to Girish. Girish? Hey, thanks Ashok, thanks a lot. Yeah, let me stop sharing. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So good afternoon, everyone. And thanks Amit and Ashok for sharing uh, the insights uh, and learnings. I think definitely an interesting time ahead for all of us. In fact, uh, I think the recent Oxford Economic Survey, uh, the study which they did in August 2020, there were quite an interesting analysis. Uh, and they said that uh, the system thinking analogy is extremely relevant in the current uh, situation. And we all know what is system thinking. It's a very scientific way of seeing entire web of relationships uh, within or beyond the organizational firewall uh, as a unified entity. And, and, and that can help us to operate smoothly, dynamically, as a part of the cohesive strategy. And having said that, I think uh, all of us as a supply chain or a procurement practitioners, so far we were always looking at as a supply chain, right? I mean, and, and I think now it's the era or now is the time, this chain need to be looked at in a slightly different context. It's no more a supply chain and we are seeing a gradual shift from supply chain mindset to supply network mindset. And probably Ashok has touched upon on Ariba network as the largest commerce network over the world, but there are many such networks which are emerging. So whether these are asset intelligence network or whether these are the networks for contingent labor or whether these are the networks for logistics business partners or whether these are the networks for probably certain track and trace scenarios. The idea is how can we build a cohesive network to ensure that the data sharing and traceability will be more seamless. And while most of the supply chains are quite effectively stress tested, but I think pandemics like this will truly ensure, I would say the flexibility of the supply chains and this is where technologies are also transforming from supply chains to supply network. And uh, thanks for, thanks Aishwarya for putting out these questions. Maybe I would request everybody to share your perspective in terms of what are the areas you think where technology can add value in your businesses. Uh, so appreciate uh, all those who have already responded with some of your inputs. Maybe I think, uh, as you can see in this current responses, supplier collaboration, sourcing and contract management. Uh, yeah, I think digital signature capabilities definitely in the current context are becoming more and more relevant. Uh, and, and when we say supplier collaboration, I think in most of our earlier conversation, the supplier collaboration has a very different connotation. In majority of the cases, it was either the design time collaboration or it was restricted to the post PO collaboration to certain portals. And I think this is the time where we have to truly get beyond the conventional collaboration definitions. And maybe I'll touch upon some of the collaboration scenarios and how the market is evolving and customers are partners and various trading partners are collaborating. So collaboration is definitely an important theme. The second important theme which is coming up 
is a compliance and security right uh, so the moment we are getting into sharing data across multiple business partners important factor is how do we share this data in a seamless and cohesive manner and whether that platform is secured and whether that platform is a global platform so the first c was collaboration the second c was definitely compliance the third c which we are looking at is consolidation right and and we have seen a slightly different trends in different i would say phases of the economy but in the current phase we are seeing a lot of opportunities to consolidate a few areas of the business and we can discuss on some of those and then the last c is around the competitive environment so whether these are the product differentiation whether this is the servitization related aspects or whether these are the transformations and leveraging technology as the key competitive advantage so ultimately these four c's are creating a unique competitive advantage for majority of our customers and probably in rest of the session i will touch upon some of the solution portfolios some of the solutions which customers are deploying and i agree different customers have taken different paths this is the industry this is their geography basis i would say the size and the maturity of the overall ecosystem but i'll share some of those customer stories in the remainder of uh, the, the the webinar so uh, i think maybe we can stop polling and let me share uh my screen now all right so uh, i think uh, ashok has already touched upon this aspect so we have looked upon p2p process or a source to pay process as a linear process so far and slowly and gradually this process is shifting as a network driven process so whether it's a source to contract part whether it's the planning and forecasting part whether it's the early capacity collaboration or the design collaboration part whether it's the conventional procurement process right and again i mean the moment we talk about procurement process there are so many channels which have emerged uh, having spent couple of decades in this particular area at the moment we talk about procurement i think earlier we had at the max two channels one was of course the manual way of creating the requisition Uh, most of our sap colleagues we know that process as a pr creation process and then the next process was an mrp driven process right and all of us are familiar with these two buying channels but in the current era there are so many buying channels which have emerged whether these are the marketplaces whether these are the vendor managed inventory kind of scenario whether these are supplier managed catalog scenario or whether these are the predictive maintenance or iot triggered buying channel scenarios right so we need to relook at our entire platforms to ensure that what are the buying channels which are relevant for our organizations for our categories and accordingly whether we are picking up the right buying channel to really deliver the value for the organization the last and the equally important part is invoicing and pay so all of us are aware about the new regulations uh, which have been kind of activated from october of this year and all of us need to get our invoices authenticated with government's invoice registration portal of course there is a revenue threshold uh, and basis that whether this process is a mandatory process or whether this is optional process that will be triggered but imagine before i send my invoice to my customer i need to get this invoice validated with irp get the invoice registration number generated have to have a valid qr code and only then this invoice will be considered as the legal invoice to be submitted to my customer so how can we enable this process not only for ourselves but for all our suppliers of different maturity so that the efficiency can be brought in across the supply chain will look at that particular area as well uh and and in the recent results the entire global economy has been really transforming into a networked economy so whether it's the contract manufacturers or logistics providers or customers or financial institutions so on and so forth the idea is 
so far our definition of transformation was restricted to our own enterprise so the moment we talk about the transformation it was always within the four walls of our boundaries of the organization now we are talking about how can we basically break these silos and get all of these business partners connected uh, to a common i would say thread so that the data sharing the transparency and visibility can be established how can we eliminate these point to point connections how can we ensure that uh, we we change the information flow as a real time information flow many of the times the material reaches first and then the information goes second we would like to ensure if not information first at least the material and information goes hand in hand and that can trigger a definitely a lot of value creation opportunities for us when we look at solutions right and and we all talked about the buying channel part so we all know the conventional pr creation process and the mrp driven process imagine that each of the user in our organizations get this kind of simplified platform a uh, very similar to what we are using in our personal lives like amazons and flipkarts i can type in what i want over here and let system respond to me that what is the material code uh, for the description which i have typed in or who are the preferred supplier or who are the uh, what are the contracts which are available in my current system and accordingly system will guide the user to pick up the right buying channel for the right categories and of course this process will be totally compliant to your procurement policies and guidelines basis different geographies basis user persona whether i am a maintenance person whether i am a marketing person whether i am a hr person whether i am an r&d person basis that persona what that user can see we can totally configure and customize it basis the user needs the second i think amit spoke about the importance of analytics i think more and more this part is becoming extremely relevant what are my compliance scenarios what are my savings opportunities what are the commodity trend analysis so that will give us additional opportunities to create value for the organization supplier management so it's not about capturing the data about existing suppliers but nowadays there is so much data available over the internet and there are lots of agencies which are providing this data as a supplier risk assessment services what we are doing as a part of ariba network and ariba supplier risk is we are proactively reaching out to 600000 different data sources Uh, and again i mean you don't have to reach out individually to these data sources we reach out to them and we give you a consolidated risk analysis platform whether it's a regulatory or environmental or financial or operational risk i think sourcing all of us are already aware of it majority of our customers have achieved lot of value whether it's the bidding process or auctioning process on top of that the direct material collaboration process is a totally different and that is where we can also support the complete plm integration we can take the plm design bomb and the design time collaboration the product costing related aspect the roll up sheets we can help you manage that complete product life cycle process as a part of this sourcing platform itself contracting of course whether it's legal contract management or a digital signature capabilities we provide the seamless contract authoring clause management capabilities the buying channels part we already discussed about this direct material spend so whether it's a particular assembly which parts are the existing parts which are the net new parts which are the suppliers uh, which parts are missing the programs Uh, what are the ecns which are specific to a particular component so we can help you trace this entire product life cycle cost throughout the sourcing project as a part of your new product introduction program financial solutions are shock touched upon the dynamic discounting part and how can we ensure the working capital is effectively managed for you as well as for your suppliers and probably the arbitrage between the cost of funds can be effectively leverage uh, by either supplier or uh, the customer or even we can introduce the financial institutions as a part of this platform 
and the power of network of course uh, this is one consistent entry point for all the business stakeholders uh, so that you collaborate effectively with all these stakeholders so in a nutshell i think uh, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, touch upon that sap provides this end to end procurement and business network portfolio it's a seamless portfolio in terms of user experience so as you can see this is an s4 hana uh, solution or whether this is a requisitioner view or whether this is a supplier view so in terms of user experience it's a consistent user experience we provide one integration layer so we have more than 230 integration points between the various solution offerings we provide one domain model across the solution stack and of course a one access so whether it's your suppliers whether it's internal or external stakeholders we can definitely ensure a seamless transitions between these different technology components we are strongly introducing api based development frameworks now so for specific extension scenarios we work closely with our partners like amdan and amdan has also developed an amazing extension stories leveraging ariba network flow control apis so beyond the standard collaboration scenarios if there are any specific scenarios which we need to develop we can also extend the network capabilities leveraging the open api platform capabilities of ariba network what is that you can expect further i mean this is not uh, i would say this is just the start of uh, this entire source to pay transformation process by leveraging the iot capabilities like predictive maintenance by leveraging the blockchain capabilities for secure rfq biddings or by leveraging the machine learning capabilities for future consumption of contracts or probably recommendation of a, a material code basis the description or an image based buying so there are various innovations which are coming in we would be more than happy to kind of uh, have a very specific sessions uh, for you basis your specific requirements so with that i would just like to i would say pause over here and see if uh, there are any questions which are there uh so thank you girish uh for uh, a wonderful explanation uh so we have few question um uh, for the panelist uh, the first question is uh, how to integrate upstream and downstream uh, without contract compliance absolutely so a very good question so when you say upstream and downstream i take it from uh, the ariba sourcing and then the downstream i would say post po collaboration process so there are various ways uh, probably how the sourcing output can be pushed as a contract in your existing erp system and then in the purchase order creation process how this contracts will automatically come up as a reference documents so that the linkage between the sourcing and the post po collaboration process is always established thanks girish and just just to add to that uh, girish uh, i think there's another use case uh, from uh, supplier life cycle and performance management perspective if we are qualifying uh, certain suppliers on slp side on upstream as a preferred supplier in certain category or certain preference we are providing uh, Uh, or one another uh, in in SLP, so that information is available in guided buying on downstream, uh, and we could build our uh, procurement policies. For example, if uh, if in a uh, when 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 uh, browsing through the products or raising a shopping cart, uh, if if a business user is selecting a certain category and trying to select a certain vendor. Um, the the guided buying uh, can be leveraging on this slp data can uh, direct user to to select the right uh, supplier for that category so that's the the guided buying part gets enabled through the upstream data maintaining slp so that's another use case in addition to what girish has called out thank you girish uh okay so uh, can we take our next question if if that has been answered Sure. Uh, yes. So the next question is: uh, Have you used blockchain in supplier network? If so, uh, where and what was the business case? So 
a good point rajiv ji and uh, nice to see you after long time so yes i think blockchain is definitely an integral part for many of the collaboration scenarios we are specifically working on a life sciences and a cpg scenario as of now where for the contract manufacturing scenario we are leveraging the blockchain capabilities i uh, would be more than happy to touch base with you and share some of the use cases associated with this okay also in continuation with that uh, how do you think that blockchain can help in financial supply chain as digital twin to material supply chain absolutely so yes i think uh, the this blockchain based collaboration is not only restricted to the design time collaboration or the contract manufacturing uh, even around the financial part uh we are looking at one specific use case with uh, banking partners and uh, we can definitely discuss that part uh, uh right uh, so with that uh, i'll take the next question uh, did sap ariba have a good solution about transit stock while material dump in warehouse for for time being hello yeah uh, it, it probably needs a slightly bit more uh, inputs uh, to the question i would say um maybe we will be able to reach out to sanjay ji and uh, try and get more details behind the question and then try and answer the uh, the question uh, it seems uh, more, more elaboration yeah all right uh, uh, the next question is material code is material code part of the standard uh, ariba solution uh i think so i mean if if the question uh, is is pointing towards the material master data or service master data that needs to be uh replic is mastered in in erp system like s4 hana and and then can be pushed into uh, ariba uh, yes answer is yes uh, if it is independent stand alone implementation then also we can be uh, we can master uh, the material or service code in in ariba uh right uh, uh so i would just like to ask panelists uh, uh, can we take couple of more questions because we have few uh, if the time permits sure uh yes uh, so the next question is how spend analysis can help to save the organization cost for fmgc industry uh sure um Girish, you want to go first, or I? You want me to pick that up? I can pick it up. I think Girish dropped off. You can. Ah, okay. I'll, 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 I'll pick that up. Um, spend analysis. I think uh, is is an add-on uh, on top of Ariba, which which sort of looks after uh, all the spend data, uh, bring it. together based on the commodity uh, based on the commodity hierarchy that can be built in uh, ariba comes up with uh, unspc uh, commodity hierarchy uh, by default but by all means uh, all the other commodity hierarchies can be can be built in um we the the spend analytics is about uh, 360 degrees of spend understanding across different uh, uh, commodities and different type of works for example with the different business areas different geographies so we can slice and sli uh, cut and slice data the way we want in terms of uh, analyzing the spend as per the requirement so specifically for the fmcg industry wherein the the, the transactions the movement of uh, goods are relatively faster than other industries Uh, i think it is becoming more important to have real time analytics information uh, uh, to hand so that uh, right decisions can be taken by the procurement leaders or sourcing organization within the organ uh, within the business or, uh, or or for that matter supply chain leaders to optimize their supply chain um having this spend analytics out of box being ability to cut it in different uh, different uh, data angles and and having it available uh, on demand uh, without having to wait for a day for a for a traditional bi solution uh, that was needed to sort of get the data into bi uh, and then wait for a day for the next day uh, and having a lag of 24 hours um, 
is, is for the traditional old days, but then Ariba kind of changes that picture and makes that data available on um, uh, the fingertips when, when it needs it. And, and finally, um, it's the, the S4 uh, or ERP data. If it's if some certain procurement processes are running, certain spend is running through uh, through uh, ECC or S4 or any other uh, ERP, for example, there is an ability to import uh, that information in in S4, in Ariba to be able to report on that. For example, expense payments, they probably don't touch Ariba, but then it's possible to get that spend information. Uh, back in, uh, in in Ariba in Spin Analytics model as well, so it's uh, it's quite flexible, uh, it's dynamic, uh, it's it's real time, uh, and I think it's not only the FMCG industry, but it's it's a, it's a transformational change that uh, Ariba brings in in this specific in this, in this space. I mean, Ashok, if you want to add anything, uh, yeah. no, I think you covered um, most of the things. I think that's that's well. Uh, spend analysis is just not for FMCG, right? As you mentioned, slice and dice the data and then get the, the visibility um, around the category or the supplier or the spend uh, based on the data that you are that you are um, getting from either from your ERP instance or other uh, procurement um, systems as well, right? So that would help you to make that um, decisions better. Yeah. Sure. That's right, Amit. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, right. Uh, thank you, Amit. Uh, thank you, Ashok. Uh, so a quick question next we'll take. How does this system uh, help so that the client receive documentation in advance before they could reach the client? And what documentation should be shared? Sure. Um, maybe I can take uh, the initial bit and then uh, Ashok, feel free to add uh, anything. Um, so when when uh, we refer system, I think there are different components of Ariba uh, solution which comes in play here. Uh, when the goods are dispatched from the suppliers, uh, they the interface or the component that they interact is the Ariba network, and the Ariba network is essentially a portal available uh, for suppliers to to receive their purchase order, receive their schedule, um, and, and 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 things like that, and being able to uh, submit invoices. And one one such part of this end-to-end -end process is being able to uh, provide shipping notifications to our customers. Um, and there is a yeah. there is a, a flipping for, for, of a purchase order uh, functionality available, which is you just simply refer to purchase order or schedule, uh, and then uh, it, it allows you to select line items from what you have uh, as as a request from the customer. And uh, you would be able to select uh, the lines, uh, update the quantities, attach uh, the documentation uh, needed for the logistics purposes potentially, and and uh, and send it out um, as as an electronic information back to the customers. So while you're preparing for the delivery from at your end as a supplier, um, and and the physical goods are being moved, uh, the customer already through the Ariba interface. Whether that inter, uh, interface is linking back to the, the Ariba buying solution at the customer end or to their uh, ERP application and S4 HANA or ECC or any other um, third party ERP application, the customer would have that information available uh, as soon as you hit a push button on your side as a supplier. So it's a real time again. And um, I think uh, what Girish and Ashok was referring to, as in we have almost two. 163 interfaces. I mean, this this integrated solution allows us to, uh, to do that. Um, so I think that probably is the answer for the question. Uh, yeah, the kind time, of documents yeah. that uh, that we can transact. I think, um, as as we mentioned, purchase orders, advance ship notices, invoices, scheduling agreements. Um, uh, I mean, the invoice status is all this. All this can be seen over the network as well. Right. So those are the kind of documents. Goods receipts. Yeah. Sure. Good, Ashok. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you, Ashok. Uh, so, uh, in continuation with the material code part, uh, we also have another question. Is CIF integration a part of material master integration? Uh, that's correct. Uh, so CIF, for those who probably are not aware for what CIF is, uh, 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 CYF is basically cloud integration framework, which is the inbuilt integration capability offered by Ariba. Uh, it offers all these uh, 200 plus APIs out of box. 
uh, one such API, which is standard out of box, is 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 material integration. So if if you have uh, SAP ERP, of course, it's like a plug and play. Uh, you simply run a transaction uh, and on and your initial master data load or for that matter, delta master data load, uh, if a new materials are created uh, as, as the business go along, all, all that information can be automatically synchronized with, with uh, Reba. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask uh, Ashok as he has uh, a reply to one of the question. Does SAP have any solution for vendor uh, manage inventory? For example, customer X and vendor Y wish to engage in a vendor manage inventory wherein vendor holds inventory at the customer location. What solution does SAP have to facilitate that transaction? Uh, uh, the person wants an elaboration uh, on that. Uh, so if you can uh, quickly elaborate uh, on that, Ashok. Yeah, hi Prem, uh, Prem Kumar. Um, so that's correct. Um, so inventory collaboration as a part of supply chain collaboration is one of the um, solution that SAP um, offers wherein uh, um, customers can expose their inventory and then the suppliers will have that visibility on the uh, on their inventory like um, on like uh, what is the mix, uh, minimum or the maximum inventory levels that the customers are maintaining. If there are any um, uh, changes in that inventory, the suppliers will get those notifications and then will be able to fulfill those orders on time uh, based on the visibility that they have um, um, uh, for the customer inventory, right? Um, through the Ariba network. And that's the solution that SAP offers for the network. Amit, do you want to add anything on top of that? Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, vendor in, uh, managing uh, inventory is is a is a I would say a, a hybrid value add between S4 HANA ERP and and, and Ariba. Um, uh, SAP Ariba network supports uh, collaborating with customers on managing the the customer uh, uh, vendor consignment stock. For that matter, it, it's enabled on the ERP side. Uh, so, out of box integration uh, to see uh, the real time inventory from supplier side, uh, what stock as a supplier I have uh, left at my customers, uh, and um, there is a real time uh, view can uh, can be seen. Uh, so, the Ariba supports that, and also when when your stock goes out uh, down below a certain level, you could be able to you know uh, replenish that as well. Those sort of scenarios are are used to support in vendor. Uh, Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, with this, I think uh, we have covered all the question uh, uh, from our attendees. Um, if they, yeah, we left one of the uh, Sanjay's questions. Uh, we'll we'll just address that one and then we maybe close it. Uh, sure. So the time. Uh, what we have is uh, budget checks and Ariba procurement solution. Uh, I think budget checks uh, sort of uh, are, are out of box functionality available again. Uh, the budgets generally are maintained on, on, on the back end side. For example, a project has a budget linked to it. Um, so Ariba again provides Ariba a procurement solution provides in real time APIs. Uh, so as a, as a business user, if, if I'm selecting a shopping cart and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to uh, buy some materials or services and trying to book them on a particular project and the project has a certain budget, budget in the ERP system. So Ariba in real time can fetch that budget and, and cross check the, the, the value of the shopping cart against the budget availability and, and allow or uh, disallow user to, to go ahead with, uh, with purchasing that particular cart or submitting that cart. So quite a few uh, checks are uh, possible. Uh, definitely, if there are any further uh, detailed requirements, then we'll be happy to uh, discuss that with you. Okay. I think, uh, Ashwari, I think that's uh, all in the given time. I think we have quite a lot of uh -huh. over to yeah. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, and I would also like to inform uh, every uh, one, all the participants that the link to this uh, webinar would be shared with you as this was also one question from many of the participants. So uh, yes, uh, the link will be shared with you. And in case you have any further questions, uh, you can uh, reach us at contact at the red amdon.co.uk. Uh, 
Um, uh, with this, uh, I would uh, like to uh, end the session. Uh, but before ending, uh, Ashok and Amit, is there anything which you want to cover up before a, a wrap up? I'm good from my side. Sure. I'm Thank good you so much, um, everyone, for, uh, for uh, being part of this webinar. And then, uh, yeah. That's all. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, everyone. We appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks again for joining us today. And uh, we will see you next time soon. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.